Hey, it's Matthew Dratt, and I'm going to be doing a reply to Clever Noob's Indoctrination Theory Extended Cut Documentary. So before I start the video, I do want to say I am a critic, and I do respect the theory. And I've seen all three of his documentaries, and they're all pretty well put together. There's, there are things I can't argue with. But throughout all three of them, Julian doesn't understand game development, and... It's pretty clear after watching all three, he just doesn't understand game development. Now, I'm not going to claim to be an expert at it. I do have history with modding and creating content. So I know and understand more than Julian does. And usually this doesn't bother me because usually what Julian says may be wrong, but you know, it's usually not too wrong. And he usually just gives it a plausible or whatever. But when I was watching the extended cut documentary, when it comes to the part with Coates on the Citadel, it, it's just wrong. It's just, the entire thing is just wrong. I completely disagree. And the fact that it didn't even get a plausible is just mind blowing to me. <laughs> anyway, let's just start with the video. Next is one of those interesting pieces about Coates that I said we would go over later. Well, now it's later. Basically, Coates is on the Citadel during this scene. Dead. Nope. No, he's not. Don't believe me? Well, it's the truth. There's a brand new cutscene that shows a Keeper taking off the helmet of a soldier who has their face hidden by a bunch of other dead bodies. And that's it. The theory's already disproven by what you just said. It's a Keeper taking off a helmet of a random soldier. That's what I believe Bioware intended it to be, and that's what everyone took it as. However, once again, thanks to Pretzel and his flycam, it turns out that this body is actually Major Coates. Oh, so you essentially broke the camera from its fixed location so you could see something that wasn't meant to be seen? Weird, right? Well, it's very possible that the reason they hid his face is because they don't want to make it obvious that it's actually him. Maybe it was because they didn't want you to see his face. So, why is his body here? Most likely because it's just a dream. Or maybe because that isn't Coates. Ever think of that one? It's not supposed to be Coates. Well, yes, it is his model. It's not supposed to be Coates. That's why they hid his face, so no one would think it was Coates. Is that too hard to understand that it... Bioware needed to pick a model, so they just chose Coates' model. Why Coates? Well, a lot of people believe that it's due to the fact that Coates is the only soldier model present during the end of the game who is capable of wearing a helmet, as all the other soldiers we have seen have berets on. Therefore, they believe that Bioware put Coates' character model in and hid his face in order to make him look like a generic soldier losing his helmet. However, there are a few problems with this counter-argument. First of all, Coates never wore a helmet that could be taken off in the first place, meaning that they would have had to make a new character model, or rather adjust the one that already existed for this scene, to give him a helmet. <sighs> and this is where we run into problems with that you don't understand game development. You're saying they took time to remodel or change the model of Coates so that he could wear a helmet. No, they didn't. It's the same Coates model that was used in the earlier part of the game. It's the same one on the Citadel. Well, then how do they get a helmet on? The helmet's not attached to his model. The helmet is a completely separate model. The helmet and Coates are completely separate. They're not together. In the cutscene, they're placed on each other, but then they're sl then they're just taken apart because they're not together. They're just they're just not together. If Coats and the helmet was the same model, they wouldn't be able to be removed from each other. They're not they didn't have to remodel Coats at all for the scene. They took a helmet, they put it, they attached the helmet to the keeper's hand or whatever. The keeper raised his hand, the helmet went with the keeper and it was never attached to Coates, so they animated Coates falling. For example, at the end of Halo 1, when Master Chief removes his helmet, they didn't have to remodel Master Chief, so he, 
could have a face. No, they just attached, they created a new helmet. They attached it to his hand and then he just removed it. And they used the fixed camera points of the cutscene so that you didn't see his face. So if they took the time to make an altered character model of Coates, why didn't they just make an altered character model for one of the Beret soldiers and put a helmet on them instead? This way they would have avoided any definite controversies such as this. Now the other problem with this counter argument is that Coates isn't the only soldier on London capable of having a helmet. There's this guy propped up against the rock here with no helmet on at all that they could have used. Why not him? He's your typical generic soldier, they gave him a unique character model, and he doesn't have a helmet. It's not like we would have recognized him as the guy laying against the rock had we seen him twice. Okay, now this is actually a good point. Why not just use this guy? I don't really have much of an answer for this. Sure, why not? But why couldn't they use coats? You only see, you're not supposed to see his face, so it wouldn't really make a difference if Flycam didn't exist, no one would know that was Coates. But that's not all. What about all the soldiers rushing the beam alongside Shepard earlier? They all had helmets, and in fact, none of them wore any berets. Obviously, it was just the same character model repeated over and over again, but why didn't they just use that one instead? It's not like Bioware is at a loss for people with helmets on here to choose from. We just watched Harbinger roast a few dozen of them, so why not use their character models instead as a generic soldier, since they're even more generic looking than the guy propped up against the rock, and because we just watched them all die, so it makes sense for them to be aboard the Citadel. Okay, now the problem with using these guys with the helmets on running to the beam, is that the helmets are on the model. Therefore, they're attached to the model. Therefore, the keeper wouldn't be able to remove the helmet unless they took time to modify the model. See, if you remove the helmets from these guys, they won't have faces. It's literally just the helmet. That's all that's there. If you look beneath the helmet, there's nothing beneath the helmet. If I was to take this model of these characters running to the beam, I was to take that, I'd put that in the 3D program, and I would like remove the helmet, there would be nothing under the helmet. So if the keeper was to remove the helmet off this model, there would just be nothing there and then that would be really dreamlike. That would probably support your theory way more. So essentially it's impossible to use these guys because they don't have a face. This proves that there was absolutely no reason to use the Coats model here in this scene, unless they wanted it to be Coats. The logic here is pretty simple. If I'm wrong, then this probably is how the conversation went. Hey guys, we quickly need to grab a generic soldier model to put in this new scene. Okay, here's one that matches exactly what we need. Oh look, here's another one that we can use. Nah, screw that guys, let's use Coats and put a helmet on him. Then let's hide his face a little so people have a hard time telling who he is. Genius! Here's how that conversation probably actually went. Hey, I'm making this cutscene, and I need a soldier so I can remove his helmet off of him. Oh, do you need to see his face? Oh, no. Oh, okay then. Just reuse this model. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Cool. They understood the implications of having Coach's character model aboard the Citadel in the first place, and they understood how much easier it would have been just to use one of the already usable generic character models instead that had helmets. Well, if I was to develop a game, I wouldn't immediately think about the people who are going to use fly cameras and hack the cutscenes so they can see wherever they want to. When you're developing a game, it's probably not on the top of your mind. And we already discussed, they can't use the people who already have helmets because they don't have faces either. And the helmet isn't actually attached to the model in the cutscene. At the same time, it's pretty obvious that they tried everything they could to hide all of the important features of Coates' face that would have made somebody jump and go, that's Coates, upon first glance. Exactly, because you're not supposed to know that they reused Coates' model. If you look at the video, he's only visible for 13 frames. If they really meant this to be secret and, oh, look, it's actually Coates, it's 13 frames. Do they really expect people to catch on to that? No, they would not. They would put more clues and more hints than 
13 frames. But what's even more interesting is that this entire scene vanishes as soon as Shepard starts walking. The Keeper and Coates were both physically present in the same map during this scene as Shepard, meaning that had Shepard gotten up and started walking, we would have been able to see Coates laying there plain as day. However, they just removed it right before we could see it with our own eyes. It disappears because it was used only in the cutscene. It happens all the time, even in Mass Effect, where something will be used in the cutscene, the cutscene will end, and then it'll disappear. But the thing about this is that the Coates disappears, and the Keeper does too, because you're not supposed to see them, and they're placed specifically there for the cinematic. That's all they are. They're cinematic objects used specifically for the cinematic and not to be looked at while you're playing. This happens all the time in video games, where something will be used in a cutscene, and as soon as that cutscene ends, it won't be there anymore, because it was only meant there for the cutscene. If we look again at Halo 1, you can see this opening cutscene. You can look at the fixed camera point, and then you can look at the fly cam. And you can see, if you look at the fly cam, there's a lot of stuff going on that you just don't see. That's because you're not supposed to see it. And so, essentially, once it goes in game, it disappears because it was only meant to be shown in the cutscene and Bioware intended you to just think oh that's one of the keepers working at one of the panels that you see when you walk by that's all it was meant for they didn't <laughs> this is rather disconcerting because why else would Bioware go through all the trouble of creating and then removing a part of the map for a simple three second clip unless they were truly trying to hide it from us they what? They removed part of the map after the cutscene? <laughs> Did you just say that? <laughs> I don't. They did not remove part of the map. They removed two objects in the map. See, there's a difference between BSP geometry. And that's essentially the map, is what you're walking on. And then on top of that, they'll place scenery and other objects. And it so happens to be they place two bipads, or characters, into the map. And then they deleted these characters after the cutscene ended. That's not removing part of the map. That's not hard to do. It's a simple script. I don't have too much experience with UDK while I do other engines, but what's a simple script for the engine that I'm used to? It can't be like a complex process for UDK. I'm sure it's just a simple script. Delete character. I mean, how hard is that to type? They didn't have to put work into removing these characters. It's probably, they probably had to type 10 to 20 lines somewhere. That's it. It's, it's not hard. This is where you just do not understand game development. And it shows. And this was probably the biggest thing. I was just like, what? They did not remove part of the map. Ugh. If you play Mass Effect, you know characters disappear all the time after cutscenes. They'll walk off the cutscene and then they're just gone. What, did they remove part of the map for those cutscenes? No, they deleted the character off of that map. But can Bioware really be this dumb? I hate to be so harsh with my words, but that's the only appropriate adjective here. Dumb. Dumb? You think Bioware's dumb because you can't understand game development? Had they used one of the other character models, then they could have just made the scene, not needed to hide the guy's face, not needed to add a custom helmet, and then just leave him there, right on the map. It would have actually enhanced the entire map to begin with, and it would have saved them an hour or two of work, and we wouldn't need to have this conversation. Once again, they didn't have to make a custom helmet. They didn't have to remove part of the map. They re probably, even if it was a random soldier and they did show his face, they probably still would have removed him from the map. Why? Because if you actually look at the Keeper and Coates' model, it's awkwardly placed. 
so they're not just gonna let you look at something awkwardly placed in game because it's meant to be one of the other keepers that you see while you're walking and that's what it's intended to be they use camera tricks to make you think that this happens in movies games pretty much all video type of media however there is a saving grace here about the fact that they're going through all the trouble to hide him the fact that bioware likes to draw from prior dlc packages for a new one Say they come out with an Indoctrination Theory confirmed DLC later into the future as soon as they're done making money with the rest of the DLC, which is a very strong possibility. They could simply then just reveal this part in full. What? They're gonna reveal 13 frames? In fact, this extended cut DLC was the largest DLC ever produced by Bioware in the Mass Effect series in terms of file size, 1.85 gigabytes to be exact, yet it was one of the shortest DLC in terms of content. Do you remember how long the layer of the Shadow Broker DLC was? Yeah, well, it was even larger than that by about 0.30 gigabytes. And layer of the Shadow Broker contained hours of gameplay, a unique driving sequence, a wide array of new maps, and a few seconds of cutscenes. A lot of critics have said that the large file size of the Extended Cut DLC is because of the new cutscenes that have been added. But take it from a video editor. Those videos are simply too short to justify a file size of nearly 2 gigabytes. Take all of the new video cutscenes added in with the Extended Cut DLC, and I'm betting that they only average out to somewhere around 1GB or so in size, if even that, because in total they were only about 5 minutes long. Just to give you a point of reference, this first documentary I produced took up 10GB in size and it was nearly 80 minutes in length. That means for the same level of high quality, which by the way was made up entirely of the same graphics Bioware produced, that the documentary was only 0.125 gigabytes per minute. I'll be generous and say that the new Extended Cut DLC added in about 10 minutes worth of cutscenes total, even though, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was more like 5. At that average that I pointed out, this only gives 1.25 gigabytes total of size taken for roughly 10 minutes of cutscenes. And remember, it's probably only 50 to 75% of that in reality, because I was being very generous to the critics with this. Even if it really is 1.25 gigabytes in size, that still leaves us with 0.60 gigabytes of space left over that Bioware put in. Okay, since I own Mass Effect on the computer and I can look at the files and mod them, I decided to do some extracting of the video files. You say, oh, it's roughly about 5 minutes. And being nice for people like me, you're going to say 10 minutes. Well, I extracted all the video files and it's 24 minutes and 7 seconds if you don't believe me you can check out the link in the description it's, it's there you go 24 minutes of videos that are included in the extended cut download whether they be reused or not it's 24 minutes worth of video you're wrong it's just, you're pure wrong. It's 24 minutes. And now, I don't know what you use to render your videos, but 1.25 gigabytes actually isn't a bad estimate, but you're kind of off with your timing. The actual size is 1.3 gigabytes, so off by 0.5 in terms of file size. And just remember, we're only counting the pre-rendered cutscenes. So there are pre-rendered cutscenes, there are in-game cutscenes. I'm only counting the pre-rendered cutscenes. So the only the pre-rendered cutscenes take about 1.3 gigabytes and 24 minutes and 7 seconds. Well, how Bioware renders them, they don't render any sound with, with those video files. So on top of that, there's no sound to any of those video files. So I extracted all the audio too. All the audio roughly takes about 275 megabytes. Whoa. Yeah. And so we have all this leftover space. Well, we still have textures for new objects added or maybe reused objects that were retextured, such as the memorial wall. Yeah, they needed a shepherd nameplate. That's roughly about 24 megabytes. And now looking through the files, they have models that I didn't count for animations for the in-game cutscenes data such as the camera points where you know where is the cutscene supposed to be looking the scripts it's there you're missing so much because you don't understand game development 
just because you do videos, don't just m be like, oh, well, I only saw about 10 minutes, 5 minutes of cutscenes in my playthrough, so that's what it is, and because I do videos, that means that's what the entire DLC is. No. You're missing all these other parts of the DLC, which if you look at, which are all clearly there, and all take up space. If you look at all the files, you'll notice all of them are accounted for, and all of that space is accounted for. It definitely wasn't filled up with those picture montages, let me tell you that much. Stilled images just do not take that much space. Okay. Those montages at the end, they aren't still images. If you're counting this in file size, they are not still images. If this was a rant about the extended cut, sure, I wouldn't mind you saying still images, because that's what they are. But they're video files. In terms of their file size, they are video files, and it should be quite obvious if you watch them. They're moving. Images don't move unless they're GIFs. I'm pretty sure BioWare didn't make all of these GIFs so they could have them pan over to the left. <laughs> they're video files. Each of them takes roughly about 3 megabytes. So with that in mind, I feel like I can honestly give this piece of evidence a confirm. Are you kidding me? Since this was a pretty long point, let me break it down for you. It's because they could have used another pre-made character model that existed and had a helmet instead of coats. While they could have used another model, they just picked one out at random and it just happens to be coats. And there's no need to have a soldier with a helmet on because the helmet is not attached to the model. They would have saved time and effort in doing so. No, they wouldn't have saved any time. They actually saved time by using coats. Sure, they could have used that random guy on the rock, but you're like acting like they could have used one of the people running down the hill and that would have saved time. It, it wouldn't have. That would have actually taken longer. Bioware did save time by using coats as just a random soldier. But instead, they mysteriously chose Coates, who obviously has no business being aboard the Citadel unless this is, in fact, a dream. Do you remember in Mass Effect 2 when you're fighting the Eclipse and Blue Suns and all those gangs? And you kept seeing that same sniper model or human face over and over and over again? You kept killing that same model? Hmm. Now, after a while... Hmm, that one bald guy, we keep shooting him. Look, there are two of him now. Hmm, this must be a dream. That, that's like essentially saying what this is. They reused a random model for 13 frames. They hit it and used a fixed camera point so you didn't know what model it was. <sighs> you just removing part of the map so they have to delete two characters what you, you don't understand game development and i can nitpick at some of your other documentaries where you just don't understand game development i actually probably could use game development to disprove some of your theories which you think don't even have anything to do with game development i mean like in your last documentary where the trees are reflecting off the metal surface when you go and fly cam and then you show a cube map and you don't understand what a cube map is and so you have this thing that I'm looking at I know exactly what it is but you don't know what it is so you're just kind of like talking and showing it it's just like and then I'm just like what, what? <laughs> and while that point was proven just how you're talking about it made no sense and I realize this has gone on for quite the while now, especially for one theory only. Julian, if you're watching this, you don't understand game development. And I understand that, but you need to understand that too. So when it comes to a point with game development, you can't just start speaking things that make sense to you completely without like consulting someone who does know game development. I respect your documentaries, and I enjoy watching them. You know, I need something to watch during dinner. I don't usually watch TV. I just load up YouTube. Oh, look, Mass Effect. I like Mass Effect. I'm going to watch this. I've seen all three. I enjoy them all. 
they're good points that I can't refuse points that do make sense for the indoctrination theory but this point isn't one of them despite you giving it a check or whatever it, it's, it's just not it's game development and if Bioware ever does come out with a DLC and this proves me wrong then then fine I'll take back everything I said but I'm 100% confident that will never happen because this 13 frames of coats is just meant to be 13 frames of a random soldier and when you go into free cam where you're not supposed to you just happen to notice it's coats I bet if fly cam didn't exist not a single person would notice it's coats but fly cam does exist and so someone was like hmm I'm gonna look around this cutscene and just happen to run into the coats now if you believe in the theory fine go ahead believe in it I don't believe in it but this point just it does not strengthen your theory it just doesn't it's game development and if you think otherwise then you don't understand game development it's it's as simple as that if you want to get into game development and modding start with the modding community halo custom edition which i am in or you know beauty k or valve's engine whatever that is there's tons of places to start learning how to mod and understanding game development and once you understand game development, you'll understand that this is not a point. This shouldn't even be plausible. It should just be a big red X. And I am Matthew Dratt, and that's all I really have to say about this. And I will not be doing a follow-up or anything unless someone wants to counter this even more. And I'm not going to be going over everything that Julian gets wrong with game development because that would be nitpicky and honestly I understand that doesn't really bug me but this just drove me nuts what he said in this this is it's completely wrong <laughs>